Hello, welcome back to Physics Teacher, and today we're looking at Newton's third law. And here's a question from the Nelson textbook, and let's get started. The question reads, there's a male astronaut, 82 kilograms, and a female astronaut, 64 kilograms, are floating side by side in space. They want us to determine the acceleration of each astronaut if the woman pushes on the man with a force of 60 newtons to the left. How will your answers change if the man pushes with the 60 newtons to the right on the woman instead? And finally, how will your answers change if they both reach out and push on each other's shoulder, shoulders with a force of 60 newtons? All right, so here, let's get started with the first part. They're asking us to consider a male astronaut and a female astronaut, so they're floating side by side in space. Let's try to visualize this. Okay, so it's really convenient that the background is already in black, so you can imagine they're in outer space, but to further help you out, we have some stars, and there's Kirby writing on the star. Now here we have a male and a female, so it's quite interesting that this is a very romantic scene. So if you ever want to talk to your date and tell her to look at the stars, remember that whenever you look at the stars, you're looking at the past because this line from their shine takes some time in order to reach us. So you could be walking nicely and say, oh, wow, we're looking into the past and together let's build a future. So something clever you want to pick up on a date, right? Uh, but here we have a male astronaut and a female astronaut and let's write down the masses. But to further distinguish between the two, because we can't just use M for both, we're going to use B for the male and G for the girl, for the female. Now, if you're clever enough, you'll notice that this drawing looks a lot like buzz. So B for buzz and G for girl. Now, they want us to determine the acceleration of each one given that the woman pushes on the man with a force of 60 newtons to the left. So what they're looking for is the acceleration of each one. But what we're given is that the girl pushes on buzz with some force to the left. So the force of the girl, G, on buzz, B, is going to be 60 newtons to the left. So recall that if the girl pushes on buzz to the left, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So that means that she's pushing to the left, but the reaction force is going to be from buzz pushing on her to the right. And because of this, there's going to be a force acting on each astronaut and they're going to be able to move in different directions. So let's draw the reaction force. This is the force of girl on bus, the reaction. So for the reaction, you could put a dash, like a prime. Prime, that's what it's called. Now normally, I would have liked to write buzz on girl as the force, because that way it helps you remember the agent and the object of interest, the order that's written. But because the question gets more complicated, I'm going to use the prime symbol to keep in mind that these two are actually action and reaction pairs. So what does that mean? That the magnitude of these two is actually going to be the same which is going to be 60 newtons. Now, because they're floating in outer space, we're going to assume that there's no other force acting on them except for the force between the two of them. Very romantic. And we are going to draw a free body diagram for each astronaut separately. So we're going to draw Buzz on the left and the girl on the right. So Buzz only has one force acting on him, which is the force of the girl on Buzz. And the girl has the reaction force 
and that's only one force on her. So the force of girl on bus, the reaction force. So what we're going to do, we're going to apply Newton's laws for each mass separately. So we want to find the net force on bus, and separately we want to find the net force on the girl. And from Newton's second law, we know that the net force acting on buzz is going to be the mass of buzz times the acceleration of buzz. And because the only force acting on buzz was pointing to the left, we can say that the net force is entirely provided by it. So we can simplify this equation. The force of the girl on buzz to the left. So that means this acceleration has to be to the left as well. And keep in mind that we were trying to find acceleration, so we need to isolate for it. And in this case, the negative on both sides of the equation is going to cancel out. And to simplify for the acceleration, we're going to divide both sides by the mass of Buzz Lightyear. So the acceleration, we can simplify that to the force of girl on Buzz divided by the mass of buzz. So there was 60 newtons divided by 82 kilograms, which is approximately 0 0.20 meters per second square. But because the force acting on them is going to be the same in this case, but they have different masses, we should expect that the acceleration is going to be different. So let's go verify this. So now we're going to apply Newton's second law, but this time for the girl. So the net force acting on the girl is going to be the mass of the girl times the acceleration of the girl. And in this case, the reaction force from her pushing on buzz it's what's going to be acting on her, and it's to the right. We want to simplify for the acceleration, so dividing both sides by the mass of the girl. We get that the reaction force to her pushing on buzz divided by her own mass is 16 newtons divided by 64 kilograms, we get approximately her acceleration to be 0 0.25 meters per second square. So that's as like we expected because they have different masses, the acceleration they experience will be different although the force is the same in magnitude, right? So that was part A. Part B was asking us to find if there will be any changes when the man pushes on the woman instead. In this case, we have the man pushing on the woman with the force of 60 newtons to the right, but because actions, there's a reaction, so he pushes on her with 60 newtons, so the reaction force will also be 60 newtons back on him to the left. So the scenario will be the exact same as before. So in this case, our answers will not change. And for part C, what if she pushes on him and he also pushes on her? So in this case, there's going to be two action forces, which means there's going to be two reaction forces. So in this case, we already have the force of the girl acting on buzz and the reaction force, which is buzz acting back on the girl from it. But there's an additional one. Buzz is also pushing on her. So we have the force of buzz on girl. But because for every force there's an equal and opposite reaction, then we expect that there's also going to be a force back on him. So that's why I'm going to be putting the prime. So this means that we have another action-reaction pair. So the green ones are action-reaction pairs, 
and the pink ones are action reaction pairs. So because the force is of 16 newtons, so if we go back to our calculations, we expect that instead it will be 32 newtons over 82, so the acceleration is going to double for each one separately. So as a quick way to check, so let's find the net force on buzz. But in this case, there's two forces on him. The force of the girl acting on buzz and the reaction force of him acting on the girl. Technically, they were all pointing to the left, but we could cancel that out, so that's why I didn't include it in this part. Each one was 16, and his mass was 82. So we have 32 equals to 82 times the acceleration. So 32 divided by 82, that's approximately 0 0.40 meters per second squared. So this was just for us to double check. So that's exactly what we expected because when there's only one force on buzz, it was 0 0.2, but now there are two forces. So it doubled up to 0 0.4 because the force was the same magnitude. All right, uh, I hope that this was clear enough and it made you help you understand Newton's third law a bit better. And until next time. <laughs>